Hey, good day. Just in case you're joining me for the very first time, my name is Brian Glaze Gibbs. Um, check out my YouTube channel, the Brian Glaze Gibbs channel. Hit the like button, subscribe. Um, my story is a true story of change and redemption. This is my ministry. This is who I am. I'm going to give you the good. I'm going to give you the bad. I'm going to give you the ugly. I'm going to talk about everything, past, present, the future. Um, today, you know what I'm saying, September 8th, 2020, what I want to do is I want to give a shout out um, to my brothers and Conrad. You know, here it is. It's two of my brothers, you know what I'm saying, my, you know, Conrad's that share the same birthday on September 8th. You know, and that is Walter King Tut Johnson and Howard Pappy Mason. Here it is. You know, they both share the same birthday. So happy birthday to Howard Pappy Mason and Walter King Tut Johnson. You know, even as you sit back and you think about it, what do these brothers have in common besides the same birthday? Okay, here it is. They both grew up in, you know what I'm saying, Pappy Mason. Okay, and Walter King Tut Johnson. They both grew up in Brooklyn. They both grew up in Brooklyn, New York. And like right now, great parents, but why? How? How did we all went astray? How did we became victim of the penitentiary? How did we became victim of the life of crime? When everybody look at Howard Mason, you know what? Everybody think that Howard Pappy Mason is Jamaican. Howard Pappy Mason is more American than baseball, apple pie, and Chevrolet, but nobody know that, okay? And, you know, don't get me wrong, he talked that talk, and he got dreads, as you can see. He got his dreads all the way down to his back, and he practiced the roster foreign, you know, um, you know, culture. He don't eat, no, you know, like I said right now, he don't eat no meat, all uh, right now is, he's a veggie, um, like I said, he gonna smoke his ganja, you know, whatever they call it. And like I told you, he live off the earth. You know, real, real, real good dude. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to depth as far as like I was saying, like how do Pappy and how do Tut, who both share the same birthday, how and what do they have in common? Besides growing up in Brooklyn, they became career criminals. They spent most of their life in and out of the jail, um, in and out of the penitentiary. You know, you got Tut, was known as a notorious stick-up kid. You know what I'm saying? That's what Walter King Tut Johnson was known for, as a notorious stick-up kid. Um, Pappy, you know what I'm saying? Pappy was known, basically, as a rebel. I'm saying, Howard Pappy Mason was known as a rebel. I'm talking about, here it is, I knew he grew up in the Crown height section of Brooklyn, and he's seen a lot of racism going on as a kid. He's seen a lot of police brutality. So Pappy, you know what I'm saying, hatred for the police is like right now is real. Like, you know, based upon he's seen when the you know people on Eastern Parkway in the Cry High section used to go out with the Jewish and what happened when the police squad come, guess what? It doesn't matter who's right and wrong. When they came in the neighborhood and they busting up the crowd, uh, the disturbance, you know, the orderly contact, when they bust into the crowd, here it is he's seen these cops coming in with their gear, they SWAT gear, you know, they helmet, they nightstick. And guess what? Here it is, what they doing, they beating down all black people. They're not touching the Jewish. They're not talking to Jewish people. Why? So when you sit back and think about it, if these folks, Black versus Jewish are in a confrontation. You know what? Here it is. Either you're going to go in there and be fair and separate them. You don't go in there and just attack one race. So automatically when he's seen exactly what was going on as a little boy, guess what? His hatred for police was always strong. Very, very strong. Um, and like I tell you right now is when you look at it now, Tut, you know what I'm saying, and Pappy both, is currently serving a life sentence. These guys are both serving natural life. And, you know, Tut is serving natural life because of the three strike rule. Uh, Pappy is serving natural life because of the Edward Burns murder. And these are the guys that also is serving a life sentence with him. 
Okay, now, you know, I, I'm just trying to go into the situation and help get a better understanding. Like, because once again, like with Tut, Tut is a good guy. I remember the first time that I met Tut. You know, the first time I met Tut, we was in Cyprus. I, my family moved from the Bedford-Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn and they moved to the East New York section of Brooklyn. And when we moved to the East New York section of Brooklyn, so we went from brownstones. We went from brownstone building apartment. And on Horsey Street, you know, right down the average apartment building only holds like six family. I'm saying six family. Sit back and think about it. Two family on each floor and there was only three floors. So now we leave, leave that environment and we go to East New York, Cypress Hill Houses. And we went to Cypress Hill Houses. Now you got a whole project. You know what I'm saying? Period. Like 30 plus buildings. And the building that we live in, guess what? Seven floors, seven apartments. So that's what you went from having six family in one building to having 49 family in a building. You know, different walk, different lifestyle, different everything. Everything goes. So now we go and we had to adapt to this new environment. And as we got there, I can remember, like I say, moving in the building. When you knew, everybody treats you like you knew. Everybody keep they distant. So I'm saying me and Tut living in the same building. His family live on the second floor and we move into the sixth floor on um, apartment 6G. And as time went on, we never spoke. And one day in particular, I can remember, we was both going to the school, PS 214. And we used to have to be bus home from 214 back to the projects. And I can remember as I was going into the auditorium, Tut was coming out of the auditorium to get the bus. I got my hands full of books. And as I'm going in, this little ice skinned little dude just shoulder checked me. Boom. And automatically I dropped my books. So you think my natural response would be, you know what I'm saying, stop and pick up my book. No, that was not my natural response. My natural response was I went after him. I went after him. I grabbed that brother in the headlock and I started pounding his face like nonstop. Is that normal behavior? No, people. That is not normal behavior. It was like you sit back and you look at it. Here it is, even in the sixth grade, I had a problem. I had a problem. I can admit it now, but you know, you think that's normal. Here it is. I didn't want to be a suck up. I didn't want to be a chump. I'm not going to let this dude, you know, take advantage of me under any circumstance. So what I did was when I put him in the, the, the headlock and start pounding his face and they broke it up, what they did is they took both of us and put us in the auditorium. And while we in there, that's together, now we start talking. Now we became somewhat like best of friends. And you, it's strange how you meet people. Why couldn't when I move into that building, he said, hey, you know what I'm saying? I am Walter Johnson. You know, he called me Tut. And I could have said, hey, I am Brian Gibbs. But guess what? I was in Glaze then. I didn't get the name Glaze until a few years later from my buddy Domino that lived in Cyprus or whatever. We didn't do that. We didn't do what normal kids do. We did something totally different. And guess what? Here it is, our life. You know what I'm saying? Our life could have changed if we would have got the help way back when, if we were recognized that, guess what? We was heading down that road of self-destruction. You know what I'm saying? So to me, when I speak about this brother, you know, I speak about this brother with love and respect and human compassion. We don't went through hell together. We don't want the Rikers Island together. Uh, we, like I told you right now, we don't want the back to back on Rikers Island. When these guys, when we got there one time and they was trying to rob us, we don't went back to back. So when you sit back and then he's in jail for natural life. And the crazy part about that, one of his conviction was me and him got arrested together. And it was on a temp murder. They charged me, us both for the temp murder. And they charged me with murder. But the temp murder never happened. It was a lie. I had to go to trial and I want him getting acquitted on that case. Tut took a plea. Because he caught another case and he worked something out, you know what I'm saying, with the prosecutor to run that time together. And even now, that kind of backfired because it's hurting him now in regards to his appeal. Because once again, he got that three strikes and you out. So he got an extra felony on his record that he shouldn't even have on his record because that crime of attempt murder never happened. That crime was, you know, brung up and made up just to get me. And just so happened by him being my friend, he got caught up with that. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully everything work out for the best for him. Um, like I said, getting back to Pappy. 
Like I told you, I first met Pappy, Howard Pappy Mason, in 1985. And I was out there, you know what I'm saying, Queens, visiting Jughead. And right now is, during that period, Pappy came up with Little Lamont, and we start talking, having a conversation or whatever. It was brief. And the next time I ran back into Pappy was in 86, when I had to turn myself in and fight the murder charge. And right now, you know, he was in the Brooklyn house, but he was in, like, you know, saying Maxi Max, like segregation. He was separated from population. And just so happened, as time went on, I got caught up and I went down to the box because I got, a, you know, got into a couple stabbing incident fights. So here it is. I went down to the box. They kicked me off and got sentenced to serving box time. So being I was in a box, you know what I'm saying, on the third floor and Pappy was on the opposite side in high security, he used to always come around. And when he used to come around, he used to make sure that I was all right, make sure I had enough to eat. Make sure, like, you know, so I can get out and use the phone. Yeah, Pappy had clout. Pappy had juice and whatever. And right now, it's like slowly but surely, you know, based upon us both being from Brooklyn, we develop a hell of a relationship. We develop a hell of a bond. And like, you know, to me, Pappy, Tut, I love those guys. Um, two great guys. Um, I wish, you know what I'm saying, right now, somehow that they can get out. You know, right now, it's like even with Tut, like I told you, Tut never killed nobody. And everybody talking about Tut had something to do with Tupac. Tut never had anything with Tupac, let alone shot Tupac. Tut is not a killer. Tut is not a shooter. Tut will stick you up, but guess what? He will beat you up, but he's not going to rob you or whatever. I'm saying with Pappy, you know what I'm saying? Pappy got a heart as pure as gold. Good brother. Um, When he got your back, he got your back. When he going against you, he going against you. So, like, to me, like, this tribute is to both of them. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and read something out of my book. Um, just in case anybody that want to order it, Beyond Lucky, the Brian Glenn's Gibbs story, email me. Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Gibbs, G-I-B-B-S, 1201 at yahoo.com. Get your signed copy. It talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is my ministry, and this is also the blueprint. If you give it and share it with the right kids, guess what? It can stop them from making that billion-dollar prison system their permanent address. This is the blueprint. You know, to me, I was a test dummy. Use my story and share it. They don't have to be a test dummy like me. They don't have to go out there, you know what I'm saying, get caught up into that life of crime. They don't have to be like me, Pappy, Tut. They don't have to do that. Why? Because once again, is if they learn from my mistake, guess what? I was a sacrifice. I became the human sacrifice, and I'll take that one. Um, what I'm going to do is read, and here it is, you know, from this book. Okay, page 26. As luck would happen, the notorious stick-up kid, Walter King Tut Johnson, and his family reside in the same building as my family. It was rumored for years that the federal government believed that he was involved in the murder of the rapper Tupac Shakur. As in the rapper lyric title, Mini Man by 50 Cent, there is a verse that say the feds didn't know who shot Pop. I got a kite from the joint that Tut got knocked. Walter King Tut was also a suspect, and a suspect in the shooting of Tupac in 94 outside of a New York City recording studio. Besides his murder in 1996 in Los Angeles, um, in Las Vegas, the attempted murder was also later part of the lyric and rapper Tupac Against All Odds. On the, um, on the seven day theory by Tupac himself. Tut and I became friends after we got into the fight in school. Funny how many relationships start off that way. A bully befriend a guy who he has balls to fight back hard. In 1980, then 16, Walter King, Tut and I started robbing any and everyone. Okay, and just like I said right now, is if you look at it and you listen to some of the stuff that he been through or whatever, and his association with um Sean, you know what I'm saying, P. Diddy, you know what I'm saying, Sean Cone, um, he was a bad, he was bad, he was known for sticking up gangster rapper, Tut, you know what I'm saying, who grew up in the same neighborhood with Mike Tyson, got away with a lot of shit, including the Brooklyn, New York barbershop shooting of three NYPD cop. As luck would give out, you know what I'm saying, he is now in um Otisville, FCI. You know what I'm saying? For life while a shock for parole. And some kid reading this may wonder why the parents are so concerned about who they're hanging out with. Like even right now, like I said with Tut, like even with the barbershop situation, with the barbershop situation or whatever, guess what? Here it is, he's with his son. So to me, you know what, what people did, he wanted beat in that case, but they still held that against him. 
Tut, like I told you right now, he'll stick you up, but he's not going to shoot you. Gunplay was there. So gunplay in a bob shot with his son, that's a no-no. That's not Tut. He wouldn't even put his son in that type of predicament, you know? Okay, I'm going to read an excerpt in regards to, you know, Pappy. You know what I'm saying? Fat Cat and Pappy met for the first time in 1976. On Rikers Island, Cat was charged with armed robbing, was serving a sentence of 0 to 18. And Pappy, who was convicted of attempt murder, was serving a sentence of 0 to 7 years. During the time, you know, that Rikers Island was a rough place. Not a day went by without an inmate being critically wounded or killed. Or forced into homosexual activity and watching guys getting their ass whipped and robbed for their sneakers or commissary item. But during that time, Cat, Pappy, and a guy named Jughead had become friends. Cat was the fighter, and whenever he had a problem with another inmate, most of the time it resulted in a fight. Cat was five foot seven, weighed two, about 230 pounds, and he won his fight about 80% of the time. Cat was also, you know what I'm saying, getting to fight because he used to look out for the weaker guys. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Pappy was well known because the majority of the guys on Rikers Island at the time had been in one of the juvenile detention centers with him. Pappy had been in trouble with the law since he was like seven, eight years old and was sent to Spofford Juvenile Detention Center on several occasions. So sit back and think about it. Even right now, during that time, which includes his membership in the Brooklyn Jolly Stopper, Pappy was also established his own reputation as being someone not to be messed with. He became known as a, he, he became known fact that if you had a problem with Pappy, then you had to attack him before he got you because he was coming after you. Pappy was tall, slim, five foot nine, about 140 pounds. Okay. But during his stay at Rikers Island, he started setting an example right away. He hit several guys along the head with a metal mop ringer. And those who escaped the ringer treatment receive a knife from Pappy. So, like I told you guys, like I say, these guys, like I say, they went through hell at an early age. And even right now is Pappy, you know what I'm saying, what he wanted getting convicted of, he wanted him getting convicted of the rookie police officer, Edward Burns, giving an order for having Edward Burns killed. And to me, like I said right now, when you sit back, guys, come on, man. We got two brothers lost, lost in the system, lost their life forever. For what? Was it worth it? And I'm saying no. It was not worth it. This is how Pappy Mason. Okay? This is the guys that got convicted. All these guys are serving a life sentence for the parole, for Brian, for Edward Burns murder. For the rookie police, Edward Burns. Come on. Like, you look at all that. You look at Walter Johnson. Like I said, that's him and his son. And I'm saying son's with him that day right now when that shootout happened with off-duty cops. And right now, they didn't know these guys were off duty cops. These guys in there acting like gangsters. Okay, he's in there to get a haircut. Hang on him and Mike Tyson. So anyway, like I say, happy birthday to Walter King Tut Johnson and Pappy Mason. Love you guys. And hopefully right now, as God will, you know, y'all guys get out, man. I hope neither one of y'all die in jail. Listen, boys and girls. Listen, anybody that's out there listening. Listen, crime doesn't pay, man. These guys are celebrating another birthday in jail. For what? For what? Was it worth it? You know what I'm saying? Having a reputation the wrong way, is it worth it? No, it's not. I'm saying getting caught up into that, making that fast money, um, taking, you know what I'm saying, stuff that don't belong to you, selling illegal drugs, um, sticking up people, taking their value. You can't, come on, people go out there and work nine to five, then you got somebody along, come along and steal it from them, take it from them, stick them up for it. No, that's not right. And like I tell you right now, my story, my story is a true story of change and redemption. This is my ministry. You know what? Like I tell you right now, what caused me to change? Pain. And if I can change, anybody can change. So once again, this is who I am. Subscribe. Hit that like button. The Brian Gladys Gibbs story. You know what I'm saying? To order your book, email me, Gibbs 1201 at yahoo.com. You know what I'm saying? I'm signing off. And once again, happy birthday to Walter King Tut Johnson and Howard Pappy Mason. One love.